Are you looking to build a dock using 4x4 posts? Hi, I'm Seth Merriam, the illustrator of a book called Building Your Own Dock. And today I'm going to show you how a weekend warrior can go about building a dock using 4x4 posts. So, you're going to need some of these parts. The 4x4 post feet, 4x4 brace clamps, J brackets for connecting sections, the adjustable 4x4 post brackets, corner irons for reinforcing your dock frames, bolt kits to attach all this hardware, 4x4 posts from your lumber yard, most docks have accessories like bumpers, cleats, and solar lights, but every dock needs a swim ladder. And of course, your dock sections. Usually after you've nailed your frame together and you've put your decking on, you're going to need a little bit more reinforcement. These corner irons should go in just about every corner you can think of that's going to have a leg attached or is going to be resting on the J brackets that connect each section. Some of the basic sections that I think are pretty manageable by hand are a 4 foot by 10 foot section or a 6 foot by 8 foot section. I like cedar decking because it's so light. In this video I'd like to show you some of the techniques and steps to take when building your own dock. Some of them I learned by trial and error and some of them are just common sense. So let's get started. Your first dock section is much like a table. It's a building platform that other dock sections can be attached to. So my first section here is going to butt up against the stone wall. I'm going to have reinforced corners in all four corners and it's going to have four legs. These J brackets that have the brass bolts on them are for attaching my second section. So my corners are reinforced. This helps when there's a load on the end of this section where the J brackets are. The J brackets have an oblong hole so you can have minor height adjustments when lumber thickness varies. There are teeth on the back side of the J bracket. When it's tightened, those teeth grab into the wood so they can't slip up or down. We used to use what we called a center bolt. When joining sections on the J brackets, we would bolt them together by running a bolt straight through both of the stringers on the end. The new J bracket has the brass bolt, which clamps into the end stringer on the corresponding section. If you desire, you can still use a center bolt along with this. So on this first section, I have four adjustable 4x4 post clamps, four corner irons, there's one in each corner, and two J brackets on the outer end of my dock section. My dock can't stand without legs and I'd like to spike the ends of them so they can stick into the ground. To do this, I don't have a pencil sharpener big enough, so I'm going to use a straight edge and draw a line from the corner of the post to the opposite edge. Do this on all four sides Set your skill saw at 45 degrees and cut along these four lines. The end result will be sharpened like a pencil. Then you can attach the post foot which prevents the post from settling further into the ground. In my case, I'm going to rest the first two legs on the footing of the stone wall. Here I don't really need to spike the ends or even use the feet. To float my first dock section into position, I'm using something my father invented about 40 years ago. They're called dragon floats. Once the dock is where I need it and I'm ready to install the legs, I can pick it up off the flotation using the jack pole and leveling winch. Another one of my father's great inventions. I'll be using the 4x4 post driving cap, a sledgehammer, and my arms to pound these posts into the ground. Now I'm ready to prepare my second section. This one is almost identical to the first dock section that I made, only this one has two of the adjustable 4x4 post brackets instead of four. You can repeat sections like this as long as you want. Each 10 foot section has four corner irons, two J brackets, and two of the 4x4 post brackets. I choose to use pressure treated 2x6s for all my framing. It's light enough that I can carry it, and it's strong enough for my boat. Now all these parts may seem a bit confusing right now, but after you watch this video, you're going to understand the steps that need to be taken to build a dock the easiest way with the proper hardware. 
Now because the wood floats, I don't need the flotation to get my second section into position. I'm just going to pick one end up and hook it on the J brackets. Then I'm going to use my leveling winch to pick up the outer end. Now that the second section is level, I can go underneath and tighten the bolt on the J brackets, clamping the second section down so it doesn't move while I'm installing the legs. Now it's time for my third set of dock legs. I was quite sore after pounding the first two posts into the ground. This time I've come back with a garden hose. This is a process called water jetting. It moves the sand away from the post and makes it much easier to sink into the ground. You want to find one of these nice old fire hose nozzles. They make a hard stream and they can pull out of the sand easily. This is one of the best ways I've found to stay cool, yet productive, on a hot summer day. My next section is the 6x8. This is where all the fun happens. I can have a swim ladder, lay out on a towel, bring out a lawn chair, or even the blender and make some smoothies. Mounting all this hardware is quite easy. We're using 3 8 bolts, so use a 3 8 drill bit. Use the hardware itself as your template. You can use ratchets and wrenches to tighten all your bolts, but I found it to be quite time saving to use a socket that goes on the end of my cordless drill. I'm building an L shaped dock so that I can bring a boat in on one side. My swim ladder will be on the end of the L away from the boat. It turns out that the adjustable J bracket has come in handy. My lumber on one dock section was higher than the other, so I had a trip hazard. I'm going to loosen the J bracket and lower it about a quarter of an inch. Once the posts are installed nice and level and the foot is on the ground, it's time to come up above and adjust the 4x4 post brackets so each dock section is level. Once the legs are driven into the ground and the dock is level, you can go around and cut all the posts and make them all even. No, I didn't really cut all those with a handsaw. And hang on, I gotta get bumpers installed before you can bring your boat in. These Guardian bumpers are 3 feet long. They're very easy to attach. Three evenly spaced holes hide fasteners from objects that may rub up against the Guardian. The tapered ends are to allow dock lines and other objects to slide by freely. The Guardian's ribbed backside and curvature provide extra strength for bumping. The tapered ends are to allow dock lines and other objects to slide by freely. The Guardian can only make things better. It might look nice now, but it's not done. The 4x4 adjustable post clamp allows you to attach 2x4s as cross braces. Using a month old chocolate chip cookie, you can draw a half circle to be cut out at the end of your 2x4 cross braces. This will keep people and other things from getting caught on sharp edges. To determine the length of your 2x4 cross brace, you can carry one 2x4 out into the water and run it diagonally from one leg to the other. Keep in mind the carriage bolt that passes through the 2x4 should be on the inside of these dock legs. You'll be installing one brace on one side and the other on the other side and one side is one side of the other to the other and back. Ah, the moment we've all been waiting for, the swim ladder. The swim ladder comes with its nuts and bolts. Assemble it on land so you don't drop those nuts and bolts in the water. The swim ladder comes with instructions so I really don't need to be talking right now. But feel free to watch me so you can see how it's done. Still watching? 
Well, maybe now it's time I show you the best way to put a cleat on a dock. Use the cleat stiffener. The cleat stiffener attaches the cleat to the deck board as well as the side of the dock frame. What you want to do is drill up through the round hole in the cleat stiffener. Put a cleat on with one bolt through it. Place that down through the hole into the cleat stiffener. Use the cleat to find the other hole that goes down into the cleat stiffener. Put the bolts through and the nuts on, tighten it up, and then drill the two holes out the side of the stringer. Put those carriage bolts in, tighten the nuts, and the cleat is done.